Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natasha. If it is your first time here, in today's video, I am so excited. We are going to be using the Tati Beauty Blendiful Puff Sponge Makeup Applicator Tool. I'm so excited to dive into this and open it up. It is $18 and you get two of the puffs in here. You get a larger one and a smaller one. And before I get into this, when I first watched Tati's video and she released this product, I was kind of like, I don't get it. I see a lot of celebrity makeup artists and professional makeup artists use puffs. Like I have this Laura Mercier one right here. This one is $16 online at Sephora. And when I bought this, I only bought it because I saw like a bunch of, you know, like Makeup by Mario, Makeup uh, by Ariel, like these huge makeup artists using them. And I just never could figure it out. Like I just could use it for powder, but I just didn't really like it. I just didn't really understand exactly how to utilize this tool. When Tati came out with this, she made this whole video about how to use it, and supposedly you can use creams with it, liquids, powders. This is like an all-in-one. You should be able to do a full face. So I watched her video twice now to kind of see the technique she uses and how she uses everything, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a full face using this Blendable. So let's go ahead and open her up. And pull it out oh cute okay so the first one out of the package is this little tiny one it's shaped like a heart that's so cute it is really firm it's really soft it kind of feels like mm, you know those like really fuzzy blankets that you can get at like you know Target or TJ Maxx or whatever it feels like one of those really fuzzy like a microfiber blanket or a robe it is pretty firm but it has like a nice little squish to it this small one here she did say in her video that this one is used mainly just for doing touch up so this is something that you're going to want to throw in your purse throughout the day and use it to kind of touch up your powder or press out any creases or wrinkles for this guy and then we have the large one right here so you can see compared to my face it is pretty large super soft same exact material as the small one this one is a lot more flimsy it's not as firm on the inside and pretty squishy god it's so soft it feels like that blanket material it really does um so in her video she demonstrated and she said that you can use this for a full face god, it feels so so soft it feels exactly like one of those really soft like kind of microfiber blankets it says here on the packaging that it is 100% polyester do not bleach do not dry clean but it says that you can machine wash this in a delicates bag or hand wash it with warm soapy water and then blot dry so in her video she said that you can hand wash this at the sink and then she uses like her blow dryer to dry it off or you can put it just like in a lingerie bag like you would with like a face halo or something like that and wash it in your regular washing machine which is probably what I'll end up doing I'm really excited to use this I'm so intrigued it is so soft like so soft it feels so good already just rubbing it on like my plain clean face so I already did my brows and my eyeshadow I did use the Tati Beauty volume 1 textured neutrals palette I just went in with the shade Soothe, this guy right here, but I used the sequin formula and I just buffed that all over my eyelid. It just gave like a nice little kind of sparkly bronzy, super quick, easy look. And I already applied my primer. So in her video, she said that this tool was best used for like a pore filling, a thicker kind of putty like primer versus if you're using like a hydrating primer, um, kind of more a moisturizer. She said like, don't even waste the time on it because you want to leave as much kind of real estate for your other products. So I already went ahead and primed with my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I want to make sure to use all products that I know are like my favorite products for this video. So I'm not really going to be trying anything new out except for the Tati Beauty Blendiful. I wish I knew what to call this. Like is it a sponge? Is it a puff? Like what is it? Because it just says it's the Blendiful, so maybe that's just what it is. It's Blendiful. I think that is such a cute little name for it. I think the price point, $18 for two of these, just based on first initial like quality of it too, I think that's so worth the price, especially since she says that you can 
rewash it and use it over and over again and as long as you take proper care of it it shouldn't lose any of the softness shape anything like that that'll be something that I'll have to test when I wash it so what I'll do is after this video I'll probably continue to use this all week and before I put this up I'll make sure to put in the description box how it uh, felt after I washed it for the first time and how the washing process was and I'll give you a bigger review of how I feel about it from using it more throughout the week but as of today it's just a first little impression using this guy and I just need to get into it my hair right now I know I look insane like a founding father or something but I just put a little bit of wave spray in my hair and put it in a braid because I wanted to add a little bit of wave to it my hair is kind of dirty so it's a mess right now but let's just get into it so I already primed I'm gonna go in with some foundation I'm gonna use my all-time favorite foundation this is the Tarte Foundsealer multitasking foundation when I use a regular beauty sponge, I never squirt it onto this and then go onto my face. I always kind of put it on my hand or put it on a palette, dot it on my face, and blend out for there. So I'm going to do that. I don't want to do too many things that I don't normally do. That's why I'm using all products I know that I love and work well. And I'm kind of following a lot of what her technique is because I really want to utilize this. I'm so intrigued by this product. I'm so intrigued. So I'm just going to pump out a little bit of my foundation and then I'm just going to dot some on the face like I would. So the way that she was doing it, she was doing more of a kind of wiping, buffing motion and then a tapping after the fact. So I'm going to start it by doing that. Okay, that blended out in like two seconds. Let me get my mirror and get a little bit closer to see if it's like any streaks in it or weird at all. This is an up close look of how the tool looks after just that first little wiping of the foundation. So you can tell that it has gotten wet from the product. That is blunt out so smooth. I really thought I was going to look up close and it was going to be kind of a little streaky like I could see some hair strokes and I was going to have to go back in with it. I am intrigued. This is so soft. It feels so good on your face. So let me kind of dot around the rest of it. That was so quick. Like if you could put your foundation on that quick every time, your makeup routine would be just like insanely fast. Look at the zit I'm getting right here. Back in. Let me get a little bit closer for you guys. What do you think? One thing I was worried about is, one, that it was going to be kind of streaky and have hair strokes, and two, that the foundation was going to kind of like sit on top of the face because you were like wiping it on with like, I don't know, it's like a towel or it feels like a blanket. It's so weird. So I was slightly worried that it wouldn't sink in and it wouldn't look as nice. But I think this foundation, I know this foundation, I love this foundation, I use this foundation all the time, is looking very similar to when I use a sponge. It's just blending out literally in like a third of the time. Let's do the forehead. I wonder how this would work with like a self tanner. Like if I were to get like my Loving Tan or my Saint Tropez tanning mousse and use one of these all over the body, like I wonder how fast and how seamlessly I could blend out my self tanner. And also, Tati, maybe you should come out with like a body sized one for self tanners. Right? Because especially if you could wash this, I feel like this would be perfect for doing a self tan and not having it be streaky anywhere on your body, you know? Wow. I am really impressed. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Oh, shit. My water! Okay. Zoomed in. Let's just look over my face and see how the foundation looks. I think it looks really good I don't see any streaks it looks really luminous it blended out really nice it looks really soft 
What do you guys think? Cute. And then this is what the sponge looks like after the math. So you can see where it is dirty, but there really isn't that much product left on here and it doesn't feel like it's soaked in really far, like it still feels kind of dry underneath. So next thing I want to go into is a little bit of cream contouring bronzing. In Tati's video, she said that she loved using this product for that and she really liked to take it and just bend it and use it like this to kind of pull it up and give you that nice kind of angular sliced out bronze contour look. I am kind of a little like... This little ribbon here, I totally get it for holding on to it, but I almost feel like because I keep just like bending it for everything that the ribbon is getting more in my way than it is helping me. That could be just like a me thing though. So I'm going to go in with one of my favorite cream bronzing contouring palettes, the Hourglass Sheer Illume Trio. And I'm just going to dip right in because that's what she did. Just going to get right in there. So I could see that it's picked up quite a bit of product. I hope I didn't do too much. What do you think? I think it's going on really smooth so far. Instinctively, I want to do more of a patting motion because that's what I'm used to doing with a sponge or even my duo fiber brush, but I have to kind of keep reminding myself to do more of like a pulling, wiping motion, which usually is kind of a little bit opposite of what you hear, what you want to do. You don't want to do too much pulling or wiping because you don't want to pull on your skin as much, but this fabric is so soft and gentle and I'm still using really gentle movements. Wow, I think that looks really good. All right, let me go in and do the other side. I always like to do my cream bronzing and contouring before I do my concealer. So that way if I go a little bit too overboard or if it gets a little muddy or weird, I could just clean it up with some concealer. And then I'm going to do the nose. So she said the way she did the nose is she pressed it and then kind of pulled up with the leftover. Pressed it and kind of pulled up with the leftover. I usually don't contour my nose, but I do like to add just a little bit of bronze to it. I will say though, it is a lot quicker than when I tend to use a brush or a sponge. Okay, so next let's move on to concealer. I'm going to be using some concealers I know and love. First, I'm going to go in and kind of shape up my face and clean up some of the contour with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. Hyaluronic Creamy Concealers. I have fallen in love with these concealers. They are so nice and so affordable. So I'm just going to do my regular concealing. Okay, and then I'm just going to go in with more of the tip of the sponge. I've been using this kind of top rounder part and then the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it and use more of this tip part. And when I saw her doing concealer, she was using more of a tapping motion. So that is what I'm going to do. Blended out really smooth, really quick. Let's clean up a little bit under this contour. I'm just gonna take a little bit of concealer like this. And then I'm gonna take the sponge and just like I do with the brush, I'm going to pull it to clean up and then wipe it down. That was insanely fast. Pull it. Wow, that worked out really well for that. Now let's move on to the under eyes. This is the part that I'm like a little bit nervous about because my under eyes they are creasy, they are difficult. I feel like that's where I have the most issues with my concealer and I almost always use either my fingers or a sponge. Rarely I will use a brush, just kind of clean up the edges, but it's more than often my fingers and a sponge. So I am intrigued to use a product like this. So I'm gonna go in with my all-time favorite under eye concealer, the Becca Aqua Luminous. I'm nervous. Okay, now let's see how this blends out. Uh, concealer. 
So I have to really kind of get it to a point to get in there. That was pretty quick. I am pretty impressed. Let me do the other eye and then I'll zoom you guys in so you can see kind of more of what the face looks like. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you guys in really quick. And then here is the under eyes. I think the under eyes looked really good. It blended out really fast. I'll still have to kind of work with it a little bit because I don't love the way it looks, but maybe if I try a different concealer with it or maybe a little bit more concealer, a little bit less, it'll work a little bit better. I do think that this Becca concealer works the best with my fingers because I am adding a little bit of warmth to it rather than with a sponge or a brush. I tend to think this looks best with my fingers. So I will use this again with concealer, but with a different concealer, maybe I'll go in with my ColourPop or Too Faced or something. But overall, it was super soft on my under eyes. It was really quick. And I think the face looks pretty good. It looks pretty seamless. What do you guys think? Let me zoom you back out. So now I'm going to set parts of the face with my Laura Mercier powder and this guy right here. She did say that this works great for powders and creams. So I'm just going to go in. Picks up quite a bit of powder right away. I don't know if I need that much. And then I'm just going to kind of press it in. I normally don't bake. So I think that this might add a little bit more powder to my face that I am used to that I normally add, but we will see here. I like to just kind of put powder in a few areas that I think I'm going to crease up in. Moment of truth, so let's get under the eye. Seems to be putting down almost all of the powder that it picked up and then why not let's try to cut out the cheekbone a little bit that was really smooth really easy if you're someone who likes to bake or like kind of cut out your cheekbones i think that this is a great tool because it holds so much powder and it distributes it really nicely okay i am going to go in and add a little bit of blush i wanted to use this product specifically with this tool because I was really interested in it. This is a ColourPop Super Shock Cheek. This is in the shade Thanks for the Memories. And it is, the formula of this is like a creamy, powdery, if you've ever used a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, you know what I'm talking about. It's like almost like putty kind of. So I'm going to go in with this guy. I'm just going to take a corner of it. It's picking it up really nicely. And I'm going to blush up. I like to bring my blush all the way up in my temples. The thing that I've noticed about this is that it's like blending it out as you're applying it. So with, I feel like, a sponge or a brush, you kind of have to like place the product and then blend it out. And this is kind of like doing a little bit of blending as you're even placing it. Cute. Okay. And then I wanna go in with some highlight and I grabbed two Super Shock highlights as well. I just like to mix these two shades. This is Lunch Bunny and Wisp and I'm going to highlight using this. I'm just gonna get right in there. I like to just kind of mix them. And let's highlight. That might be the quickest I've ever applied a Super Shock cheek, especially one of the highlighting formulas. I tend to love to use my fingers the most with the highlighters, and I still feel like it takes me quite a bit to blend it out, and that was so quick. Let me do the other side. That highlight went on so fast, I feel like, and it blended out so nice. I will say with my fingers, it is a little bit more reflective on the cheeks, but I think that maybe if I kept layering it up, it would kind of get more booming, but I'm really liking how everything is looking right now. So I'm going to hop off camera, finish up my eyes really quick, 
um, put some mascara on, put a lip on, and then I will be right back to kind of give you my full thoughts on this Tati Beauty Blendiful. Okay, so I added some mascara, added a lip, and I set my face with some setting spray. I'm going to zoom you guys in to give you one last kind of complete close-up look at my face. Okay. So I do think that everything looks really nice, really seamless. I think everything blended out really great. I will say though that I do notice that I do have noticeably more makeup on than I tend to wear. I think that this applies so much of the product that it picks up that you ended up getting a fuller coverage and more makeup on in general, especially with the powder. I normally powder my face with like an eyeshadow brush and I'm really selective about it. And this I felt like really kind of packed on the powder. So I do feel like a little kind of cakey in this area here, but I usually don't add that much powder. And I think that with this, I added way more powder than I'm used to. But overall, I just did my makeup so quick everything blended out so easily and so nicely let me zoom me back out so this is what it looks like now that i am completely done doing my makeup not as dirty as i thought it would be it seems that a lot of the product kind of went on my face so up here is where i use the powder and you can see it kind of is like a little bit caked with the concealer and the powder you can see i use the blush right here and the contour down the middle but i feel like there isn't that much product left on this plus I still have this whole other side and I really feel like I can probably reuse this one to two more times before I really had to wash it it still feels super soft even with all of that product on there I am really surprised with how clean it still is I thought for sure it would look a lot dirtier but I think it looks really nice like I said, the only thing is that I can tell that I have more makeup on than I usually do. I used a little bit uh, more foundation and definitely a lot more powder than usual. And I think it's because this applied pretty much all of the product you're putting on this is going onto your face rather than with a sponge that kind of sucks some of it in or a brush that absorbs a little bit of it. So I think this is really great too for like using the most of your products. But overall, I think it worked beautifully. It blended everything out so quickly. It looked so airbrushed. It was really easy to use. The only thing I really had problems with was kind of figuring out, you know, how to hold it in my hand the way I wanted to and what, you know, were like the angles I wanted to go at. But I was so impressed with just how fast everything blended out and how there isn't really streaky. There's no hair strokes. This is still really clean. Like I said, when I wash it, I will leave in the description bar kind of like how it felt and how it looked after I washed it, if it retained its shape, if it stayed just as fluffy. This little guy here, she said specifically in her video was for touch-ups throughout the day for to throw in your purse. I can see how this would be really effective for that because it is really small and it is a little bit more firm. I don't know if you would want to use this to like use for putting on product go ahead, but I think more this is meant just for touching up. I usually will bring something with me to touch up, but if I'm honest, I never touch up throughout the day. I'll always bring like a powder compact, a little brush, and my lipsticks, and I'll touch up my lipstick and my lip gloss mainly, but I'm not really going around adding more powder, blotting it out. I'm just like, if I look a mess, I look a mess, okay? Like, I'm living my life. <laughs> um, but to each their own, I do think this is really cute, and I will bring this with me next time I go out and kind of test it out and see how it works for that. But I'm pretty happy with it. I think $18 for these two is such a reasonable price, especially because they are reusable. That is so great. I do think that everyone should go out and get one of these because it worked so well, and it's so fun to kind of use something different, to learn something a little bit different. Like I said, I'm intrigued for self-tanning with this. Like, I think I might buy another one online if they aren't sold out yet just to use it for my self-tanner. Let me know if you want a video on that because I really believe that this would do self-tan so nice. This is a little bit small, but if I'm going to be honest, I don't love using self-tanning mitts and usually in smaller sections of my body I'll use like a big buffing foundation brush because I don't want it to be streaky and I want it to be really nice so like up on my neck area and my chest and around areas like this I usually end up using a foundation brush or like a body blender because it works better and it's a little bit less streaky it's easier to control so I wonder how well this would work with self-tanner like I just like 
I need to know. I'm going to go online after this and try to order another one. And I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to try it with self tanning. So let me know if you want to see that or if you just want me to like give you an update on Instagram or something. I'm really excited to keep using this. This is like a fun, cool little new thing for me to add into my makeup tool collection. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you ordered one of these, if you're interested in it at all, if you saw it and you were just like, no, I'm not interested. I think it's a gimmick. Let me know how you feel in the comments down below. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.